Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing my medium large boho knotless braids. I always have two rows down at the bottom and then right above her ear there's gonna be four rows. This video is gonna have some tips. Let's start off with parting. Anytime you're parting and you have a section, you wanna lift it up and down, making sure that it's parallel to the part below it. Also, when you're parting your client's hair, you wanna make sure that their eye is parallel to the ground, making, making sure and ensuring that the line that you're creating in their hair will be also parallel to the ground. If your client's head is facing down, looking at something, the line may not come out as straight as it would if their head was facing up and parallel to the ground. Always make sure that you have clips to separate the hair just from getting in your way. I use maybe like three to four clips at a time when I'm doing hair. Um, also, when you are going to start off parting for your braids and you don't really know how many braids you're gonna have in that one row, I just do like a little draft of like, hmm, there might be four braids, there might be five braids, just depends. Also, you wanna make sure that when you're creating your braids on the next row, that the braid is going in between where that line is. See right there, there's a line between. You wanna make sure when I get to the next row that there will be a braid in between that. So ensuring that you're making sure that your braids are laying in between each other, we'll always start off with that first row you did way at the bottom. So the first row I do, did way at the bottom was ensuring that the next row was gonna be in between the lines and then the next row will be in between the lines. So you wanna make sure that every time you're going up and up and up that you're making sure there's a braid in between where there's a part on the row below it. Hopefully I'm making sense. I'm trying to explain this as best I can but that's basically how you ensure that you have a braid within um, the section of the row that you have below it. So when it comes to the braid, you wanna make sure that you're detangling the hair completely. You're gonna put gel on top you're gonna put gel on the sides and you're gonna put gel underneath. Once you've already applied your gel to the entire section that you're gonna work on, you're gonna make sure that you take your comb and detangle it again. You might do this <laughs> a few times. You do it as many times as you need to to ensure that there's gel all on it. You wanna lay that hair down flat and then you wanna start braiding. How many pieces do you need to do a medium large braid? So for me and how I do my work might be different than other people. I particularly do not count how many pieces I use for each one. What I use in the front may be different from what I use in the back. What I use it from the back may be different than what I use at the top. It just depends. Her hair might be thinner, it might be thicker. But to ensure that the braids are all the same, I'm just looking at the braid that I started off with as my starting point also while I'm braiding I'm making sure to put gel on her natural hair so that it is blending into the braiding hair that I'm using making sure that you're putting gel on their hair while you're braiding will help so much with flyaways also try to tuck as much as possible that's what I do to ensure that my braids are gonna look nice and neat. I try to tuck as much as possible. I add gel where necessary. If I feel like her hair isn't tucked enough, like right here, I didn't feel like I tucked her hair well enough, I'll go back and I'll do it again. And I'll add hair if I feel like it's too thin and I need all the pieces, the three pieces that I'm using to braid are the same density. That is the only way to ensure that her braid will be long lasting 
Now, I know this may be a step people skip, but make sure when you comb the top that you also comb the bottom. For some braids, I don't really need to do it because it's already detangled, but this is just for, you know, reference. Comb the top and comb the bottom so that your knotless braid isn't sitting down low. I hope that makes sense. Sometimes you can see knotless braids and people don't have the braid in the middle of the square. It'll be down below at the bottom of the square and you want to make sure that it's basically in the middle so you're going to get a good grip on it making sure everything is flat and tight and then you're going to start adding your pieces sometimes i start immediately and i add a piece it depends sometimes her hair may be thicker so it doesn't really need a piece added until maybe two or three strokes it all depends because i'm trying to get a certain density consistently all over her head As you can see, this has a nice grip on it. If you don't know how to do knotless braids that well, I would suggest starting off with, you know, starting off with small or medium knotless braids to practice. The larger the braid, the harder it is. And I know some people think, you know, it's not hard because it's a large, it's a big braid. No, when you're working with more hair in one section to braid, there's a lot of hair to worry about. You have to make sure it's completely detangled. You have to make sure you got your grip down packed. It's a lot to think about. Now that we got that first row above her ear down packed, I'm going to tell you guys again on how I was trying to describe where to put your braid for your next row. And make sure you add that gel in between the parts so that you can see. Lift that section up and down so you can see if that section is off right. See how it's getting a little pointy at the at the edge for her? You know, the line should be going straight across. We should make sure that it's not going slanted. We want all the braids to be in like a square, if that makes sense. But yeah, you want to make sure that that line is crisp. Use that gel, flatten the hair down. See how I'm parting and then I'm combing the hair down so I can see the part? That's what's going to get your parts crispy. Add the gel, comb it down, then look at it and do it again. You might have to do it a few times. So see how my next braid is going to be in front of that braid. And it's not going to be, um, it's going to have a braid in between the line that's below it. If that makes sense. I'm trying to like layer it basically. You want to make sure that when you're putting a braid above a braid, it's not right on top of it. You want it to lay in the middle of the braids below it. Now, of course, since people's heads are round, it's a little bit harder to get a complete square in the back because, you know, your head rounds off, of course. So once you get, you know, higher and higher up, you're not going to have a complete flat square. It's going to look a little condensed at the top, but still a square nonetheless. But it just is going to look slightly different. This is just what happens with me when I braid and how I braid. This is how I like to do my rows. I know some people like to make that part that goes from ear to crown, the top of the head, back to the other ear. I personally don't like to do that. I used to do that. I will say I used to do that. But I notice you get less braids when you do that. So for me, I like to go all the way around the head, all the way around the head. Like just keep going all the way around the head. But what I do is, since I already had those two rows down below at her nape, below her ear, once I want to start the braids above her ear, I'm going to create a symmetrical middle part all the way from the tip of her nose all the way down to the back. That's what's going to help me keep keeping on the, the rows to go like around and around her head. I know my explanation of things are not the best. My vocabulary is not <laughs> the greatest, but I'm just trying to make sure that I'm having you guys understand me. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys are getting what I'm saying. But I hope this video is helpful to somebody because I'm laying down some tips, some things that people don't think about or some, some questions that people may have that they're not thinking about, that they, they are thinking about, sorry. So hopefully I'm answering those questions currently.
So now we're getting on to the third row. So right there, that's going to be our last row up at the top. Perfect. We want to make sure that she's going to have like that oval part is going around and around the head. So since I have a perfect oval part, it's looking good. Everything's looking symmetrical. And I've already made my middle part because it's already been helping me through the process. That's what's going to ensure that everything is the same on both sides. Yeah, the sun out, so my boy's gonna trap today. When you get money every day like Saturday. Niggas lying, yeah, he stuck with a cap and fit. Niggas right, nigga hit with the map today. I personally like to use um, this kind of comb. I'll leave it down linked below. I know a lot, of, a lot of other people use the styling comb where it doesn't really have like a specific primary um, a tip at the top of it. But this is just what I like to use. I know in school I used um, what they call as a styling comb. I'll leave that down below as well. I do use the rat tail um, metal part. I do prefer those combs. If it doesn't have a metal part, <laughs> Most of the time, 100% of the time, I'm probably not going to use it. If it's for me, yeah, I'll use it on myself. But for my clients, yeah, I need to get the real deal part crispy. And if I got to do it a million times and practice my parting, that's what I got to do. But parting really takes the cake when it comes to this. Because this, this right here isn't sped up. This is going to take more time. I really don't take that long to braid. Honestly, it's the parting. I like it to be crispy. I'm getting it down pat. So right here, I'm going to be showing you guys how I part the next row with the braids. So the further and further higher up I go, I'm ensuring that there is going to be a braid in between a part that is below it. So right here, I'm going to place my part. And boom, it's going to go like in, in front of that braid. Now, sometimes people's hairlines are a little bit different. They don't really go, you know, up into the front like they're supposed to. It might go a little bit back, might be receding a little bit. But that's when you got to finesse and make sure that your braids are at least attempting to go in between the braids below it. You know, you got to cover up that line. You don't want your hair to look spacey or gappy. And that's what creates those those spacey looking braids or, or making it seem like you don't have enough braids. You want to make sure that that line right below it. Yeah. You see how there's a braid right there. There's going to be a line on top of it, but if there's a line below that, you know, that row we're working on, we're going to put a braid in between that. Cause we gotta, we gotta fill in the spaces is the end of the video. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Let me know if you learned anything in the comments. And I'll definitely see y'all in my next one.